some of you have been asking if I would go through uh, some of the stuff that we do behind Complete Maths, uh, particularly this universe, this map of mathematics that we have. Um, this is something we've been working on a really long time, started working on this in 2004, and some of the uh, best maths educators in the world have worked on this. Um, so I'm going to dive into this in a second, just before I do... Um, a reminder that everything we do is based on this mastery cycle um, and in the mastery cycle there are some really important features of a mastery cycle which is a, a responsive model of teaching testing prerequisites varying uh, models metaphors and examples being able to quiz regularly and so on um, and these features kind of drive what we what we build out in our curriculum uh, so if i just come back over to this universe you can see here there are thousands and thousands of granules in complete maths. So if I zoom all the way out, you start to see this idea of a universe. And one of the things that has bugged me, I guess, for many years is that people sort of think of mathematics as some kind of linear progression, as those schemes of work are linear. Um, and learning's not linear at all. And, and actually, it's not two-dimensional it's not even three-dimensional if we take a look at what you're seeing here in this universe of maths we do have the three dimensions of the almost spherical shape this kind of schema building up and up and up but you can perhaps also see there's a kind of spiraling out here from something deep in the center a spiraling out around here um, out into the further reaches of the universe so there is another dimension at play here there's time there's mathematical maturation going on here. So although these, these ideas spiraling round over time could be presented in a linear form, which is what we have to do in our, in our platform, it's not at all linear. And I like to think of it as this three-dimensional, di three four-dimensional map of mathematics and mathematical maturation. As, as human beings learn things, they're, they're building out a schema of knowledge and it's you can see here there's a kind of central point in here and it's building out and out and out into these new ideas but you can also hopefully see the links between these ideas so even though there are things out here quite far out in the universe they're linked to and giving new perspectives of earlier mathematics if we zoom in maybe to the center here you you probably find things that you would expect early on in this sort of center of this universe um, so in here you have things like for example, counting in steps of 10, and it's linked to lots and lots of different ideas. Um, and it's quite a, an early idea in mathematics. You can see here how it's linked in a prerequisite and dependent way. So things that have come before it, things that come after it, things that build up from, from each of those ideas. And as we spiral out through the universe, this schema of knowledge is building and building and building with all these connections. You might have seen maps of maths before. Um, I'm pretty confident this is the most sophisticated map of maths that's ever been built. Um, nobody else does anything like this. There are thousands of nodes here and the connections have been very carefully thought out and those connections continue to be refined as more and more pupil data tells us about the strength of those connections. You can see out here Far out in the universe, you end up with strange little dead end parts, which are really fascinating to me. Um, you can see almost emerging, there are mini universes out here, for example. What is this mini universe out here? Well, I'm sure it won't surprise you to learn this particular mini universe sitting out here is to do with statistics and data and so on. But it's still intricately linked to lots and lots of different areas of maths. You can see in the center of the universe, yes, there are early number ideas, but there are a lot of shape ideas. You know, for, won't surprise anyone who knows about early years learning in mathematics that the learning of early number is hugely dependent on the, er the learning of early shape and space and pattern and so on. The idea that you can just learn number without shape and space is, is obtuse. Of course, these things are all linked together. So what's going on here in this, this kind of universe that we have? You have all these thousands of ideas, and then each of these little ideas, whatever they are, 
each of these little ideas is supported um, extensively in, in the same way. So if I jumped over, for example, and I wanted to find I don't know, a bit of trigonometry, and you can see all the places where trigonometry appears, and like you'd expect, it's starting with early stuff in trigonometry and then builds up and up and up and up in these ideas and you're ending up with things like, you know, double angle formulae and things like that, um, the kind of stuff you would expect. And these are all the places where these uh, trigonometric ideas exist in the system, um, in, in, in our curriculum, lots and lots of different places. And then for each one of these little things, so this is one of these nodes, there are thousands of these nodes, this is one of these nodes. If I jump into one of these nodes, what we have, what we've been doing for a long time, so we have what the node is about, maybe how it links to a particular national curriculum, depending on where you're based. And then we have pedagogical notes. So what do we know about the teaching of these ideas? What support do we have to give to teachers and so on? So we have this kind of pedagogical support that we provide and maybe some examples of um, research papers and the like, misconceptions, what misconceptions might have, might come up, what do you need to be looking out for? Um, and then we have examples of the kind of questions you might be asking. And remember, this is just for this one tiny granule. So here you have you know a bunch of different questions you can ask. Let's take a look at one. So if we open up one of these questions on this trig, you can see here I've got a work solution and this is algorithm driven. So I can regenerate this and get different questions and you see the work solution is changing as well. So all of our <clears throat> granules are supported in this way where they have these, these questions. Um, so let's take a look at some other ones. So here's another one, for example, somewhere else in the curriculum, a bit of bar modeling going on there. Uh, there's another one over here where I've got some always, sometimes, never problem going on. Uh, and here's another one here where I'm doing plan views and elevations and the like. You can see that these can regenerate. This is really important in the mastery cycle because a part of the mastery cycle is about batting to and fro, to and fro with the pupils to get them to the point where they are gripping the technique that you're trying to communicate with them. So it's really important that teachers have lots and lots of different examples up their sleeve that they can keep saying, OK, I'm going to try one now. You guys try one. I'll try another one. Now you try one. And one of the other things we have in, in that same sort of vein is what we call uh, example problem pairs with fade, uh, backward fading. Um, you might know about backward fading. Backward fading is a really useful thing to be able to do, really easy to do. So. Here we have an example, and as a teacher, I can go through this with my pupils. I can say, let's work through the steps of solving this. And I get to the end and I get a solution. And then I can ask the pupils, okay, you have a go at one. And they have a go at one. And then maybe I discuss with them through the steps of theirs. And that's fine, that's a normal example problem pair. Now what I do is I regenerate, and this time, rather than going to the end, I fade out the last step. So I don't show them the last step and I ask them to do another one, and they have to do the whole thing. And you can imagine what's going to happen next. So they go through and do the whole thing. I regenerate and get a new one. And this time, I fade out the last two steps. So I'm not going to show them the last two steps, but they have to do the whole thing. And we call this backward fading. It has a really big impact on long-term memory. It has a really big impact on file transfer, their ability to use this in different areas of, of maths later on. Um, and the system has these automated backward fading um, processes rather than you having to think, I need another question, write it out, need another question, write it out. It's all here. And when you want them to do a problem, they can go off and do their problem and as many of those as you need them to do. So we have this backward fading idea in here as well. So all of the, uh, all of the granules have these example questions. They also have the objectives you're trying to hit slightly different language for pupils. And then <clears throat> all of our curriculum is tagged with what we call didactics. So when we refer to didactics, we mean the technical detail, the technical mathematical detail that is being encountered when you come across a question in here. And you see a lot of this is really, really um, granular in its detail. Like what does the equal sign mean? What does a digit, what does equality mean? 
Um, and you can see, you know, we've got things like the field axioms. Um, we've got things like magnitude, roots, and so on, because they're going to appear in this particular granule. So we have didactics, and we also have models. So what models will be useful in teaching? What are we looking at? Pythagoras theorem, trigonometric, trigonometric ratios. What models will be useful? So we had uh, the unit circle, obviously, where we'd start. And then we've got things like geoboards, we've got mensuration tools, we've got Quisner rods, we've got dynamic geometry, uh, autograph from us. Um, so you can see all of these objectives supported in this same way. Let's go to this objective on the map, see where it is. So if I zoom to this, and here we are. So here's this particular granule in the map. It's quite far out in the uh, in the universe. The, sort of here's the the boundaries of the universe are out here. It's quite far out, as you'd imagine, uh, but you can see it is sending its ideas further out into the curriculum, and it does depend on a lot of earlier stuff as well. And this map, I find this map really fascinating. I play with this map a lot. Um, it's very geekily fascinating to play around with. I love these little dead ends here that start occurring. Um, you know, what are people learning about here? So we've got something to do with displacement. Where's this going? Why does it end up? Ah, oh, it ends up in presenting a logical reasoned argument. So this is a kind of culmination. These little cul-de-sacs are often cul culminations of lots of ideas coming together. Um, and you see this happening quite a lot. There's another one up here sticking out and we can see this happening all over the curriculum. So this is our, our universe of mathematics. This is the map that drives everything that we do. Um, it's really interesting that incomplete mathematics, we had to find a way of presenting this in incomplete maths. Uh, it looks like a linear journey, but we absolutely don't believe that mathematics is a linear journey at all. It's about a growing schema, like almost like blowing up a balloon. You're starting here in the, in the middle of the universe and the balloon is expanding and expanding over time, like a, a schema forming as lots of things being integrated which is what all these connections are. This is, this is how you're able to assimil assimilate new knowledge into your schema because they are connected in these ways. So you can shine a light on new ideas from previous ideas. And we can go anywhere in the universe and explore any of these ideas. And they're always supported in precisely the same way as we saw a moment ago. You know, so if I went to whatever this is, squaring a binomial, it will have precisely the same support. We also have a way of looking at the universe. We're seeing the whole of the universe here. We have a way of filtering the universe. So I can, for example, look at certain areas of the universe. Maybe I want to know how integral calculus evolves or sequences evolve and so on. So I can look at specific parts. You know, maybe I want like the learning of the learning about time. Where would that be in the universe? Well, hopefully if I click that, we'd expect that to be quite an early maturation period. So it should be somewhere towards the center of the universe. And there it is. We can see those ones that are being highlighted here now are just the ones that are to do with time. And it is indeed early on in maturation when I'm learning about things like days of the week and what a second means and stuff like that. But you can also see it does feed out to things quite far out in the the curriculum. It's going out elsewhere because, of course, it will relate to things to do with displacement and so on. So we have other ways, many different ways of looking at our curriculum. Um, I hope that's useful to take a quick look at this uh, this map. Like I say, we've been building this since 2004. Um, nothing like this exists. It, it's taken many, many, many people to build this um, over a long period of time. And these connections we are measuring these connections to see whether or not they remain valid as we get more and more pupil data and their pathways through mathematics. So hopefully that's useful. If I was to leave you with one message from this is that learning is not linear. Um, maturation really, really matters. And it is really important that mathematical ideas are linked together in these mini webs, these mini universes, these webs are linked together so that yes you might be learning something about number that you can shine a light on it from the perspective of something you know about shape and space and so on so any questions you have about this please do give me a shout on twitter i'm very happy to discuss